the uh, the first picture we have up here is uh, not, that's not that's not the first one. <laughs> Modern conveniences. This is uh, my mom and dad, and uh, I think a lot of you all know my mom. I think you knew my dad. And uh, anyway, and introduced to the family here. This, you know, my mother here. For those of you who may not know her, um, and uh, my brother Jack is, is here with us today. Um, and uh, my middle son Bart is is uh, here with us. I appreciate that. And uh, the uh, uh, kind of uh, latest uh, part of my family is. Yo-Yo here running, running the, uh, the machine, a special lady in my life. Uh, but um, anyway, what I wanted to do is to is to go to the next one, and uh, is to uh, kind of run you through the genealogy. This is the, the Patterson uh, genealogy up here on top. Uh, this is this is my mother's uh, family down here, and uh, I will. Uh, take you back through uh, some of these uh, pictures and talk about a little bit about uh, who these folks are and, and, uh, and where, they, where, they, uh, where they came from. Um, the, um, okay. Uh, this, this is uh, my grandfather, my, my mother's father and mother. Um, Ernest and, and Nancy uh, Trapman, Nancy Ingram Trapman, um, and uh, okay, next, next, yeah. This is again uh, Ernest Trapman, Nancy Ingram Trapman here with uh, part of the family, and uh, okay, next. Uh, this is uh, uh, Lewis and Martha Ingram, my, my mother's uh, grandmother and uh, grandfather. Um, and uh, they are, uh, they're from, these, these folks are originally from Alabama and uh, came here. So next, I'll get to the other part here in a minute. Uh, this is, uh, Wanted to uh, kind of you know inform you a little bit. This is my grandfather, uh, my mother's father, and uh, when they were doing the, their freighting, and uh, I'll read you a letter here about the uh, the Ingrams. That was Lewis and, and uh, Martha Ingram, my, my mom's uh, uh, grandfather and grandmother. Uh, Lewis B. Ingram was born March 15, 1841, in Georgia. The Ingram family migrated from England. Lewis Ingram was wed to Martha Cook. Martha was born in Georgia in 1851. Her family migrated from Ireland. Uh, Lewis and Martha then moved to Alabama, where eight of their children were born. The last child was born in Mississippi. Sadly, only eight of the children survived. They were the oldest uh, to youngest. Uh, Leonardo turned there's a whole bunch. Nancy was about the third. That was my mother's. Uh, mother. Um, in the spring of 1892 in Mississippi, Martha Ingram died uh, five or six uh, months after giving birth to her last child. Uh, one source said that she died of pneumonia and another said she died of, of tuberculosis. Nancy Ingram was 14 years old when her mother Martha died. Being the eldest daughter, uh, Nancy uh, took on the role of motherhood of her seven siblings. Uh, from Mississippi, the Ingram family moved to eastern Texas and then to Creona, Texas, uh, which is located southwest of Amaral. Uh, they lived in covered wagons and began freighting. They moved to New Mexico, then on Old Mexico, from Cananea to Hermosillo. Uh, they lived there for about two years. Lewis and his sons transported supplies to the mines and hauled ore away. And next, they moved to the Sacramento Mountains in the Cloud Crop Rio Dosa area of New Mexico, where they hauled logs and lumber to the uh, Chiricahua Mountains in Arizona. 
During this time, the Abrams would also camp in Tombstone, Arizona, and that's where they first met Ernest Trapman, my mother's father. Uh, in 1905, Ernest Trapman, uh, my mother's father, married Nancy, my mother's mother, uh, and the entire the entire Ingram family had moved up here to Mesa, and so then my, uh, uh, that's where my grandfather uh, uh, came up and married uh, Nancy, uh, the uh, my grandmother. And they continued to freight and work on farms in Mesa, and my grandfather uh, uh, homesteaded out in the Queen Creek area. Uh, we're not sure exactly where, but it was out east of the uh, Queen Creek Wash, somewhere out there, which they didn't get water uh, when they finally came through with the, the canals, and so therefore he walked away from the area out there. Uh, but the Roosevelt Dam was being built, and uh, that's this picture here, and uh, it would freight from Phoenix up to the dam, uh, hauling supplies up to the uh, uh, Roosevelt Dam that was being built. Um, Alice Ingram, one of the other daughters, uh, met a guy named the day, Sheldon Hill, at the Roosevelt Dam, and then later got married. Um, and um, so that's kind of a little bit of background of my grandfather, grandmother on on uh, on my um, on my mom's side uh, there. Um, okay, next. This lady is uh, Maria Trapman, my uh, uh, my mother's grandmother on uh, her uh, on her on the father's side, her, and uh, her husband Herman Trapman. She came from she came from Germany in uh, uh, about 1884. Uh, he was working over at the uh, Carlisle mine in New Mexico. Herman was, and she was she was still in in uh, Germany, and um, he wrote her this letter, uh, which was in German, and they, they translated it. It says, Dear wife and children, Dear wife, when you and the children land safe in Baltimore, you will have to ask how long they uh, thought you would have to be on the train to get to Deming. Then you will have to be ready, dear wife, and then ask them how much sooner a letter would reach me before you would get to Deming, because I will meet you in Deming. Dear wife, you will receive nine dollars uh, after, after you land in Baltimore. And that was after she'd gone through Ellis Island. They didn't mention that when they, when they go through Ellis Island. Dear wife, you will have to ask exactly how much or exactly how to behave on the train. <laughs> Don't have anything to do with strangers. <laughs> Don't buy anything on the train because they will cheat you. Uh, buy enough in Baltimore to last you for the whole trip. And don't buy anything that will oh buy 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 uh, that will not keep that long. Make sure you uh, if you have time along the road, you buy something. Before you leave Baltimore, you will have to ask them to explain the American money to you. There's dollars, 50 cents, 25 cents, 10 cents, 5 cents. If you still have any German money, you'll have to get it exchanged into American money. I am writing the agent in Baltimore, and they will uh, have the address of a German family in Deming. If you get there before me, go there. You, let's see. You will you will close for now. No, will close for now. Uh, but uh, I wish. Let's see. Uh, I can't read that. P.S. You will have to show them the address if you get to Deming before I come to get you. So anyway, that's that's kind of why. Your why. Your why. Your why. <laughs> I didn't hear any honeys in there. No, no honeys. Uh, okay, so uh, what's next? Next. Okay, this this is um, on the left is my mom.
father's mother, and uh, this is my uh, uh, grandfather's mother again, uh, Maria Trapp. Okay, next. Okay, um, now this is the, the Patterson side. Uh, that, this is my uh, grandfather, uh, my dad's father, um, who was a, uh, a sheriff in Searcy County, Arkansas, which was uh, probably one of the more bigoted poor counties in the world. And uh, still, still, yeah, still, Bart spent about six years back there, not in that county, but they were back there. So anyway, they, uh, uh, I know I. Barbara and some of you all who have dealt with the schools before. I remember when I was in high school growing up back there and my uncle, uh, Bill, was on the uh, the uh, school board back there in a little town. I mean, they used to fight like crazy talking about raising the taxes by one-tenth of a penny. One-tenth. I mean, I didn't understand that. You know, or, but anyway, uh, he, uh, he got... Uh, and there's various stories in all families, I guess. But anyway, the uh, supposedly the Ku Klux Klan killed him uh, when he was in office. So uh, he was he was quite young, and, and uh, there were seven kids in that family, uh, and uh, so he was uh, when he moved out of, when he moved out of the picture and moved on. There was some tough times that came forth. So um, okay. Which one's next here? Uh, this is, uh, again, on my father's side, a mean group of folks, looks like. <laughs> but, uh, this, this lady right here, Sarah Daniels, uh, back there was my uh, um, uh, great, great grandmother and, uh, and married to this guy here, Reason uh, Prender Patterson, who supposedly was half minister and half renegade. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's the uh, that's part of this. And this 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 Andrew Jackson Patterson was a, a guy who came over into Arkansas from Tennessee. This the entire family uh, immigrated from uh, Scotland, Ireland, so on and so forth, into the Carolinas, and then in, and then into uh, uh, Tennessee over around Shelby, Tennessee, and then on over into Arkansas. And a number of these folks um, uh, from, from over in the Tennessee area, basically, were uh, involved with the uh, uh, Confederates uh, during the during the, uh, the war. And um, I, I think they're, they're, they had some presence over in uh, in the Ozarks of Arkansas, but uh, there's records of them being down at. Vicksburg and different places down there, some of the patterns and some of the priests and so on, which you'll see a picture in a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think personally, uh, you know, I, I think some of the stuff I read, I think they were paid, you know, by some people to be in there. I think they were that poor. And I, I think some of them, all of a sudden, their names disappeared on the records in Vicksburg and some of those places. I, I've always kind of thought in my own mind that some of the patterns don't like this, but. I think they uh, went AWOL and ran up in those mountains where they couldn't find it. <laughs> so, anyway, okay, next. Um, this is my uh, uh, grandmother and my dad's mother, uh, Elizabeth the, the priest. That's for the, the priest family. Uh, uh, we get connected with the, the priest family. And, uh, uh, I, I'll see you see a picture a little later. I, I did, I guess, meet her when I was quite young. I don't quite remember, but and she died when I was about five or six years old. Uh, she kind of became some kind of a Christian science deal or something like that, and she had a bowel blockage, and she wouldn't let them operate on her. She died in the hospital there in Marshall. Uh, was Sam the priest any can be? Yeah. Sammy and Plummer and Plummer. all those, yeah. And, uh, the uh, um, okay next. Uh, this is the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's. Yeah, there. It looks like some tough times. Uh, anyway, here's the first time I. 
She's in the back of my, my uh, dad and some others. And some others. Uh, the, uh, this James the Priest here, and this Caledonia here was my mother's, my grandmother's mother. And you'll see a picture of her in a little bit. Uh, but uh, um, the, uh, I think James the Priest, I think, uh, Corley was the one that was uh, um, with old Uncle John that used to live out on the, on the corner out there at uh, Dobson and Dobson Ray, Ray Road. Yeah, North, North East for Northwest Corner. Right. And uh, so, and then uh, my Uncle Charlie was uh, kind of the youngest boy of that bunch. And you probably remember him. He drove yeah. out here for Dad for a lot of years. Um, Okay, next. Uh, yeah, this is Caledonia, uh, priest, my uh, grandmother's uh, uh, mother there. That's her mother. So, okay, uh, next. Okay, this, this is uh, my dad and one of his brothers, Uncle Bill, and, and uh, this he. He, uh, my dad came out here and sometime, I think about 1933, the first time, uh, came to town. Um, he said he came in here on the square and uh, um, he was coming out to see Uncle John the Priest, but uh, he had a dime in his pocket and he promptly worked it and walked over to the bar that was on West, uh, Boston, there on the north side, here, got a beer. <laughs> he said, you know, I could have bought any piece of land out here I ever, you ever thought about out here for 25 cents an acre. I said, my God, Dad, why didn't you buy some? He said, well, didn't you ever think I didn't have 25 cents? <laughs> so, but anyway, he was, he, I think he stayed here with Uncle John for a little bit. I think he made a, a contact with Dutch Schlesinger, and we'll see that in a little bit, but, um, then he went back uh, to Arkansas and uh, went into the CCC camp, and that's really where he learned how to uh, operate heavy equipment and um, and all those kind of things. I think he spent about a year in the CCC camp, and then he came back out uh, here to Arizona and he went to work for Dutch Schlesinger, uh, and Dutch was um, had a tillage outfit. Dutch cleared lots and lots of land around it, cleared the land down there, a lot of it for Goodyear Tire, uh, for the Goodyear Farms, Okatia, a lot of stuff out toward the Queen Creek area. Anyway, uh, Dad uh, went to work for him, and, and uh, he, Dutch would pay him, he said, a dollar and 10 cents a night if he drive a cat at night. He'd only pay him a dollar if he drove in the daytime. So he drove at night. <laughs> anyway, but sometime, <laughs> Along in those the periods of years, there uh, uh, El Paso Natural Gas came along, and they were clearing. Dutch was clearing some right away for them for their pipeline, and uh, when they finished that, El Paso Natural Gas offered him I think six dollars a day, and Dutch says, "Well, you better go with them because I can't afford that." So he went to with El Paso Natural Gas somewhere around 34, 35, somewhere along in there. And uh, then he was down in uh, across uh, West Texas, uh, New Mexico, down in New Mexico, across Southern Arizona, and so on, putting the pipelines in the El Paso natural gas pipelines uh, up to uh, Winkleman, Ray, up that way when they, when they went up there. And that's kind of where my uncle came and got hooked up with him at one time, anyway. And uh, and then. Uh, they were kind of headquartered out of Jal, New Mexico, and I guess they went back there or something. But then they, they put him into uh, uh, setting uh, turbo, uh, turbine engines in the booster uh, pump stations along the pipeline. So he was, he was uh, working in some of those. And next. Uh, then he ran into this young lady here. <laughs> I, think was, I think that was a few years earlier, but anyway, that's, that's my mother. But uh, they were, uh, she, my mom was, I think, waiting tables in the, in the Horseshoe Cafe in Benson, Arizona, uh, when they got together. And uh, 
1938, 39, somewhere along in there. He was he was working in that booster station out there west of Benson, uh, setting those engines out there. See my big toe sticking up. Then they went to. <laughs> <laughs> then they went. They went to. Uh, they went back to Jowl, New Mexico. Well, let's see. What's next here before I get to that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, jumping around a little bit, this is my mother's immediate family, her, her uh, sisters and, and two brothers. Um, and uh, it's kind of, kind of interesting because uh, my mom's the only one, the, the girls uh, last left uh, living, but every one of the girls uh, lived in well into their 90s. And uh, the lady on the far left lived to be over 100. Uh, and they were all from down in the uh, Cochise County area and so on down in there. Uh, at least that's where they were kind of young growing up. Uh, this guy, Ray, Ray still lives in Wilcox. He's 96 years old. Um, and Ed lives down in Alfreda. Ed's about 93 or so currently. Uh, so uh, uh, they uh, got some longevity someplace along the line. Uh, <laughs> German family, and uh, maybe Arkansas, maybe some of them. Um, okay, next. Um, my dad and mom, me, I, I think that's uh, Elfrida, somewhere, or no, I mean, uh, maybe St. David, somewhere, mom, I don't know. Next. Uh, the, uh, this is, uh, we're back in Jowl, New Mexico, that's me in 1941. Uh, next. So that's my dad's mom, again me, and that's, uh, I don't have any memory of that, but anyway. <laughs> and then uh, right after uh, that, sometime in, I think in about 1942, uh, I, dad uh, got hooked up with one of mom's brothers and decided he didn't an entrepreneur and is going to go out on his own and do all kinds of things with that heavy machinery. And so, next, uh, this is we were down in we were down at Hachita, New Mexico, down in southwest New Mexico. He was uh, uh, working on some railroad grade and some uh, stock ponds and so on. And that's uh, me with my pet rooster. <laughs> next. I'm not sure what's in the hat. Gene, Gene thought we should uh, show this. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, I think this is this is Jack. See that toe head. And, uh, next. This is a um, picture of Jack and I and Mom down at St. David, and I was I was about three years old with a broken arm. Uh, one of my other cousins put me on a jackass, and the jackass got rid of me, I guess. <laughs> but uh, anyway, down in St. David, down there, my granddad was living there at that point, and uh, mom and dad and I had been living in a. When Jack came along, we'd been living over there in New Mexico, and then Jack was born in, uh, in Douglas, and uh, uh, we were living in a little tiny, tiny trailer house that didn't have hardly anything in it and as mom says we were there was an old uh, barracks or something there that was in that Anchita area that we used to cook in and, and uh, had some other some finer things of life there and uh, so uh, over at St. David my dad and granddad uh, built a trailer house a, a, a big one uh, it was uh, about 20 feet long and uh, made out of galvanized metal and so on and that's so that's where uh, we lived uh, my some of the memories that I remember and we were uh, next this picture of two boys again the dad in that same orchard down there obviously and next and so uh, during this period of time uh, we were working our way toward Chandler uh, we were 
we had lived down in, uh, in like I say, in that uh, St. David area and so on for a little while. We went over to Sarita, where Dad was working over there. Uh, and those guys, they were, some of those guys were growing some crops and stuff over there. And he was doing some uh, tillage work and so on for them over there. Then we moved into Tucson for a little while. Then we were, uh, uh, they bought a feed store down in Benson. And they were down in the, in the Benson area. And uh, they, uh, it's okay, come in. And uh, uh, they were, again, he was still doing some attractive work and so on, but uh, they were, uh, he was uh, hauling hay from up here in the valley down there to the feed store and out to the, to the ranchers in, in uh, southern Arizona. And uh, uh, sometime along about that time, they were, uh, beginning to dismantle the uh, internment camp down the rivers, down on the uh, Gila River Indian Reservation. And so he, uh, they got into hauling those houses, uh, those barracks out of down there, and hauled some of them into East Chandler and out to Apache Junction and so on. But anyway, in the, in the meantime, uh, we moved up here, and uh, <coughs> Mom and I have a little bit of a different memory about some of that deal. But I think we came here in about 1945. Mom says we came here in 46 or so. And, uh, and I, I know, uh, you know, one of those times we, we moved in here someplace. But we moved that trailer house out there uh, uh, just north of uh, Ray on, uh, on uh, Dobson, at, in the, kind of the north end of that Uncle John the Priest place. There was a Bud, the priest, uh, had a place there, and we were back there in the Cottonwoods and lived there for a while. And then uh, they bought a place here on the north, I mean, on the southeast corner of, uh, of Williamsfield and, and McQueen out there. And that was uh, uh, that little piece of property, that looked like a little two room uh, place there. We lived for a while. Of course, the McQueen was a dirt road. and. All that stuff, and then it wasn't too long after that that we, uh, and in that same time frame is when my dad went into partnership with Dutch Schlesinger and they formed uh, Patterson Tillage and Leveling, and uh, we uh, took one of those. They took one of those barracks and remodeled it, and we lived in that out on Fry Road out there uh, where the shop was, just west of, of Dodson. Uh, next. Uh, this is uh, kind of when he was getting into that, and he had uh, that old uh, 170 airplane. We had him had an airstrip out there uh, that ran all the way down across that the um, shop property, and then another half a mile west of there, across the 80 acres that we uh, used to lease, and uh, down toward where um, Air Products is now. And uh, so they, we had that. There and that was where the the, the shop for Patterson Tillage was there and and the office next. Um, that's the plane we almost died in. No, oh. no, that was no. that <laughs> airplane. Was, that airplane came a lot later. <laughs> that, this one was first. So anyway, that was uh, this is uh, obviously when he came back from one of his fishing trips down at uh, Rocky Point. And then Marie Jaycott was our secretary for ever and ever and. I don't know who the gentleman is there, Mom, do you? Uh, so that kind of is uh, my immediate family. And next, um, the extended family, uh, they kind of have is that um, I grew up with, we grew up with, were machinery. And these were all later on, all the scrapers and stuff that, that we had. Uh, this, is, this was our shop that we built out on uh, the south side of the airport, out on Queen Creek Road. Next, show the picture of Dad when we bought that Steiger, when Steigers were first coming into being. Next, this is an old uh, 60 cat that was a uh, Dutch head they were using down in the in the Ocotillo uh, area down there, down coming out of the silo. Island. They had the silage, um, and then next, uh, this is that machine here, and a small one, and a small one back there. You know, some were these were some, these were gas, and then 
geese would come on. And that was the first caterpillar in Arizona, I think, that Dutch had. And uh, next, this is Dutch here, and that's an old 2UD8, and that's a knife on the back that they used to use to grub out the, the mesquite roots and all those kind of things with them. And, um, so they had, that was you had to break up the heart band too. Great, yeah. Well, the next one, so they had the old board pile that could go about three feet deep of that thing, break up that heart band, and that was one of the first moldboard plows in Arizona they had, so. Next, uh, this is part of the other, part of the almost like family. That's, this is Reed Riggs. That's my dad. Here I am over there. That's this is uh, Dick Evans. That's Walt Young, and that's uh, Darnell Riggs. That was up north of uh, Seligman. We were hunting up there in about uh, 1958 or something like that. Okay, next. This is their uh, trips to Rocky Point. That's what they used to go out and down there, 16 foot. Woman and board, that old truck and stuff, and they, Dutch and Dad, and all these guys down there. A lot of, a lot of old names. Uh, next, this one uh, put in there again, kind of extended family. Um, this is uh, uh, the end of there. This, this is Art Price right here. Uh, that's uh, Bill Collier. Guy that had the had the farm out way out west uh, there near where the uh, testing testing international yeah. testing the yeah. where they were gonna near where they were gonna build the San Marcos and the the desert out there and so on and uh, this is Dutch here they were all Dutch always had a deal he buy a new truck every two or three years a Chevy truck always a four speed and so on and half ton and He'd get it when it finally come in down here at Kirby's or wherever Simmons or Brown or wherever these guys were they buy it from. He'd take the thing out and rip it and roll it out through the desert, out through there and and the uh, mesquite and all kinds of stuff and scratch it up. Come back and say, Dutch, why in the world are you doing that? He said, Well, I don't have to worry about it anymore. You know. <laughs> anyway, there's uh, and next uh, this is. Uh, uh, again, uh, we've got uh, Gene Gage here, who was very involved in the community. This is uh, Mackenzie, uh, Dale Smith, world champion in the Cowboy, and my dad. And I think that's when my dad was the uh, president of the, the Sheriff's Posse, I think in about 63. Uh, but um, uh, these guys were extremely involved uh, in the community, my mom and, and dad. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, with uh, all kinds of uh, civic organizations and so on, and and uh, early on, you know, when they were trying to get lights on the ball field and so on, uh, they would go around and, and get people to uh, commit to a, a telephone pole or power light pole, you know, and give 200 bucks for a light pole or 300 dollars to put the lights on it or these kind of things, and then. He'd take his um, uh, boom truck that we had, they'd use them to set those things. They'd get some guys to dig the holes and they'd set those things. And, and uh, that's kind of the way they did the, uh, the ball field and so on. And then the sheriff's posse was it's very, very instrumental in, when the new hospital came along in 61. Uh, and they, they put that, uh, uh, the first heart machine or whatever, was out there at the hospital, the first major piece of equipment that the Sheriff's Posse uh, raised money and and, uh, and bought that. Um, so, um, and you know, right about here where we are here, uh, in whatever it was, uh, the late 60s or whenever then they decided that uh, they were gonna take the old ballpark out of here and there was the old train, the engine was sitting here and uh, there was a teen center here and so on. They decided to move it out. Ray Armstrong uh, decided that we ought to keep it. And so 
dad and some of the others and so on with their boom truck and so on moved it, you know, railroad by railroad tie and rail and moved it down there and, and uh, put it where it was for years until they, until they established the railroad museum out there. Anyway, uh, a lot of uh, things in history and stories about, you know, the family and uh, connections with uh, Chandler and a lot of you people. What about flying farm? Yeah, and then my mom would let me show that picture. <laughs> so, we were very involved in the, the flying farmers, my dad and mom, and my mom was the national farmer, flying farmer queen one year, and, and uh, Barbara and Norman. His dad was president. Yeah, dad was president of the organization. So anyway, they, uh, there's on and on names of all kinds of people that were involved in those old groups and used to take the legislators and the senators all around, flying around the state. And heard a lot of great stories about that, but that was the way they, that's the way they had a lot of influence as well. Uh, but um, anyway, Number of, number of other things we've talked about, but um, next. Uh, this is uh, my Patterson, came out of Patterson side about 1988 before um, some of them began to pass away. And we were getting ready to take a trip down in the Grand Canyon on the mules, and so we met up and lined up, and, and, uh, and uh, we, you know, we, we were uh, with our shirts and everything else getting ready to to go uh, do that down there. So anyway, okay. That's that's uh, that's